Hello. Hello and welcome, welcome to our van tour. Yeah. It's the um, Auto Trail Tribute T670. I've had it for three months now. We've done four and a half thousand miles. So we thought it was about time to do a van tour to let you guys know um, all the things that we love about it, the things that maybe we don't and we change kind of thing, and uh, just generally give you a tour of, uh, of what it looks like. So cab area, from your point of view, what's it like to drive as a van anyway, and the comfort bits and things like that? Oh, it's so easy to drive. As, um, I mean, I drive a Fiesta. So the difference between the two is a lot a lot yeah. greater than you think but it doesn't feel like it it's so comfortable the cruise control absolutely spot on and mm. easy to use um, the aircon's fantastic um, it's um, it's just cab aircon we haven't got aircon in the habitation area no but, not, uh, John would love that but oh, we yeah. haven't got that just yet yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the I seats like, are dead comfy as well, aren't they? So. Yeah, I like the fact that, like you say, with the seats wise, you can do. I mean, like the last trip we did, uh, we did like sort of 900 miles in a day. Yeah. And one thing that I didn't suffer from at the end of that was any kind of fatigue, any yeah. backache or leg ache or anything like that. So I did happy with that. Very comfortable. Like I say, it's got the automatic gearbox, which they call. Yeah, it's the Comfortmatic or something. Comfortmatic. Isn't it? Essentially, it's a six speed manual gearbox. Um, but it's got no clutch. It's um, robotized. So yeah, there are electronics that um, take control of changing the gear and doing all sorts of weird moves like Mandy said. Yeah. But yeah, I like the controls on the steering wheel. So we've got um, Bluetooth um, steering wheel controls. We've got all that kind of stuff on there. I think the layout works great. So another thing to point out as well is the overhead storage. So over the top of what is the driver's area, there is some storage up there. This is where we store our bedding. It's great. Get both of the uh, the quilts in there. I can't reach it, so John has to do it. And then we've got this household um, thermal blinds or thermal Black curtains, curtains, yeah, uh, glued together. As you drop that at night, no one can see into the uh, habitation area, and um, it generally kind of like cuts out all those light issues. And also, if you use thermal blinds, you know, like the silver ones, you stick to the windows, you get condensation in the morning. Whereas with this, you don't get anything don't like that any at all. Problem with condensation. It's been great, yeah, hasn't it? It's been yeah. good that, um, yeah. And it also means that you don't smack your head on the bulkhead when you go through, because this kind of like, stops you from doing that. So we move on to the diner area. Here we have a moving table. It creates a nice space as it is right now between the two seats when they spun round. And also it comes back enough that I can take the driver's seat back enough that I feel comfortable as well. It's not like the table's pushing in the way or whatever. Um, but yeah, comfy seats, uh, plenty of storage underneath the, um, the banquette seat here. Um, and Cooper loves this little area underneath. Yeah, it's and like a little den for him, isn't little it? Place, yeah. yeah. So here's my lovely compact kitchen. I've got a sink, which is perfect, nice and deep to uh, wash the pots in. I've got a hot and cold tap right there. And we've got a three burner hob, nice big burner, and two smaller burners, which are um, ideal to get the uh, the breakfast cooking. The only thing I can complain about is this. If you don't put the tap straight, it catches it, and we keep getting soaked. So here we have a handy little extendable side. It's up like that, perfect for when you're washing the pots. And you get three drawers, which are fantastic. You have a nice shallow one, which is all sectioned off ready for your cutlery. And we've got everything else we need in here. We've got pots and pans and placemats. And of course, my coffee press, which is perfectly fitting in there. On the back of the sliding door, they've put some door pockets there. Whatever you put in the door pocket, as soon as you slid the door back, you'd scratch the paintwork on the side yeah. of the van. Nice idea, waste of money. So here we have the oven, and uh, as you can see, it's a nice big size. It's got a grill in there as well. The only problem is, you have to decide you don't have to go front to the back of the van before you start cooking, because as soon as you shut the door, it cuts the gas off. Right, and this is the fridge. It's a great size fridge. We've got a, a little freezer compartment there, which actually comes out. Um, to give you more fridge space if you need it, but we've not had a problem with that at all. Fantastic. It runs on gas um, and it runs on the battery and electric hookup. Now here is our small but perfectly formed little toilet. We managed to get um, the bin to stick on the back of the door so we can access it from the kitchen. As you can see we've got lots of storage. We've put some um, elastic bands down here that can hold in all the towels and toilet rolls and things. A couple of little issues. Firstly, we have the toilet have to have a little stool for me 
for my feet because I'm too short to uh, to reach the floor properly. I sit there and my feet dangle. And this is ridiculous. That digs in your side. I don't know why they thought to put it there. It's terrible. We've got a drop down sink and mirrors with storage behind, which are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So we've got a uh, toilet roll holder. Uh, this was for the shower curtain, which we decided to take out, but we use it for storing other bits and bats. And we've got a, a towel holder on the back of the door and coat hooks. So we've got a lovely drop down sink. I really like this sink, actually. It's uh, a couple of magnets at the top and then that drops down and you've got your sink for washing them and whatever you need to do. If you notice, there's no plug hole and that's because they expect you to use the sink and then tip it up and then it will tip out of the back there and down into this little uh, this little reservoir at the bottom where it drains through. The only problem we do find with this is that the magnets are rubbish. So we'll be driving down the road and we'll hear a bang and we'll find that the sinks come down on the way. However, John has managed to do a lovely little thing that helps us sort it out. And it looks a little something like this. So that clips on there and then close the door and that stops it from falling down. So this initially is the wardrobe, but we've decided we're going to repurpose it and use it as a larder cupboard. So we'll put some uh, shelves in just temporarily for now, uh, which work a treat. Got everything that we need in here, but we are going to put some wooden shelves in there to make it uh, a little bit better. So back here we've got four cupboards, which are absolutely ideal for the tiny little amount of things that we need to put in them. However, because we travel light, we manage to get all of our clothes in. We have two cupboards each per side. And as you can see, they're rather shallow. We can just about fit um, a pillow in there. So we'll cover that later uh, on. Nice double bed when it's down, it's really it's easy. Um, if anything, the little runners as you pull them out for the supports in the middle are a bit finicky. You have to do them totally equal either side, otherwise they kind of stretch and don't work. So yeah, once the beds fit together, um, fit together perfectly okay. We have our little mattress toppery things on top of there. They're great um, for just taking out all the little bumps. Yeah, makes yep. it really comfortable. Yep. Yeah, so underneath the seats that make the bed are a little bit of storage. Unfortunately, on one side, it's made up of the Truma heating system and the Sargent electrical system. Yeah. And then on the other side is where the electrical stuff goes in there. So look, I got fairy lights. These are brilliant in the back. These give a really, really nice glow when you sat in the back and, and chilling out. It's far better than the, uh, than the bright downward spots that we got with the van. We just need some more in the front. Mm -hmm. So as far as the van's blinds are concerned, every window's got these double blinds. It's like the pleated blackout blind uh, and then a pleated um, fly, blind fly blind over the top of it as well. And they really do black out pretty damn well. Um, you do get a little bit of uh, light bleed from the edge there, but other than that, you know, they're perfectly okay. I think they're really okay. recessed nice and well, aren't they? Yeah. Be better than the other one. So lighting wise, um, basically the front and the back have got two lighting areas, the toilet's got its own lighting and the LED little spot lamps, um, but on the floor right at the front of the, um, like the dining area when you walk in there's some nice floor lights, there's a nice light bar at the back of the kitchen sort of worktop area. The desk is out of nice light that actually, yeah, doesn't it? It yeah. bounces off the back of the door at night and gives some nice light inside. Yeah. Uh, we've got a um, toilet again, it's got some nice spotlights in there and uh, on the outside we've got um, a nice light rail for you know sort of underneath the awning or just an outside light. So we understand that it's a budget van that we've bought here so no complaints really about that but there was one 12 volt socket in the entire van, uh, the habitation side of the van so when you're stopped that's the only power you get um, and no USB sockets. So the first thing I did was replace pretty much a lot of the electrics or rather I added, added to, to them, a lot yeah. of the electrics. So if you want to see what I did there's a video um, where we're up there, oh, over there. Up there, yeah. up there, up there I think up there yeah um, which talks about everything that I've added so rather than telling you now then I have added a lot of electrical stuff to it batteries and outlets and all that kind of stuff. And it's brilliant. Yeah it does yeah. mean we get a lot more off-grid capability and we also added a solar panel as well. Yes. So yeah we had a good day fitting that. Yeah interesting experience yeah. um, and yet again if you want to watch the video of that that's up there um so 12 volt system now is absolutely brilliant um, no qualms about going away for a week without ever wanting to plug in or anything like that it no, works a treat fantastic. and i can charge my kindle 
you can charge your Kindle and we're even talking about getting a kilowatt inverter or rather a two and a half kilowatt so that it runs at a um, constant kilowatt of power so I can have my Nespresso machine so she can have a Nespresso oh. machine because you know coffee oh coffee yeah enough said I think I need coffee as far as the van's uh, basic kind of services, um, like you know, water, gas, and loo, and all that kind of stuff, we pretty much covered straight away. I was really impressed with the spec. The base spec gave us gas it tank. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you know what gas it is. It's like LPG for cars, uh, but essentially you're just using it for heating and hot water and cooking, cooking and, and fridge. fridge. Um, and so far, it's been fantastic. Every appliance is very efficient. Uh, water tank wise, we've got two water tanks grey waste and fresh yep. and um, again you know like sort of 15 minutes of filling up at the tap and that's full toilet wise um, great toilet you know the usual um, is it Thetford cassette kind of toilet system yeah, with wheels and a little handle on it so that's really good easy enough to use isn't it yep. um, electric flush on there so yeah the other thing that came with as well was um, the hot water and blown air heating system and that's been absolutely brilliant as well yeah. it's got a boost mode for hot water what would you say an hour yeah on if gas. that it was good yeah yeah um, heating as well um, you know it works perfectly well we've only had a couple of occasions really so far we need the heating but it's bang on isn't it it's there straight away with the heating yeah and if it's not and you need it we know you've got the um the little app yeah the app's great so it's got the inet truma inet system on there which means you can get the app and you can say uh, i want to set the heat in you know like at this time to come on then or whatever um and then basically sort of treat it like your home um, heating control system and you can even pop a sim card in it um, and then if you're out wandering up the snowden hills or something you can send a text message saying in 10 minutes what that heating up i want to be baking up when i get in there yep. so it's pretty crappy. good yeah so now we move on to the critique part which is what do we actually like about the van um, and what do we possibly think we could change so move on to first things what do we like about the van this this we do like the layout like the layout yep. like the layout and i didn't think we would use a no. diner as much as we do we pretty much live in this bit we've potentially walked away or never even gone to look at caravans and other motorhomes because of this layout mm. thinking it'd never work for us we always went for the traditional um kind of like you know two side bench seat bench seat yeah. kind of thing but now this layout is absolutely fantastic yep this ability for us to eat you know it's one person either side you've got a nice big table then um and with the side that pops out here as well it creates quite a big space for you to have tea and snacks and put drinks and and all sorts of stuff really it's nice yeah. and comfy it is really good and then you can be doing stuff you could have your laptop and i've yeah. got enough room to read there mm. it's fantastic so yeah very happy with that, that and the throughput through um you know like the middle gets a bit tight but again with this layout you've got two um seat belt seats so there is some sort of like you know law that defines how wide the seat has to be and that's created unfortunately a little pinch zone um, in the middle of the van but you know it is what it is it works well and you do get the option of taking two people with you know seat belts yeah and with yeah. the throughput as well the ability to be able to walk through the side door and out through the back is fantastic yeah. and the airflow to get if you want to cool down to be able to fling open the doors is amazing yeah all the other fact that i like about that because we've had like say caravans and motorhomes that have been coach built and then you've just got one door yeah i know on the, the other motorhome we could have potentially come in there and gone through that way but it's just a bit of a faff whereas now we've got a huge door to come through here the sliding door and then if mandy's cooking like i said we've got this pinch point here around the kitchen area because of the seat so i need to get to the back or something like that then i can just kind of go through the back doors and then like you know sit down there or get access to something else and pass it through or do whatever yeah so yeah it's absolutely that's one of my most favorite things i'm yeah. sure the the, the doors on, on the van yeah the layout of it so another thing i really like about it is like the finishings on the inside now as i've said it's a budget van you know it's sort of like essentially the very base model van that we bought almost um, but it's got kind of like leatherette soft furnishings to the side walls and the ceiling as well 
So it feels luxurious, it looks really nice, yeah. but I'd imagine it cuts down on road noise and rattle noise and stuff like that as well, so that's and something insulation else. insulation a little bit. Bit of insulation yeah. as well for the old uh, cold temperatures that we'll no doubt have yeah. when normal weather resumes back in the yeah. UK. <laughs> and then what we'd change about the van, we've got to talk about that I guess. And I don't want to be negative in saying what I don't like about the van or what's wrong with the van, is what we would personally change because it's our preference. Yeah. After you know four and a half thousand miles and three months, this is what we change in the van. Um, first of all, extraction fan um, in the loo. Yeah. And the loo being either lower or the floor being higher so that we didn't have to use the, the little stool thing and the removal, removal totally or replacement of the shower tap. Yeah. Um, that's that bit. Overhead cupboards, what do you they reckon? just need to come out by about another three inches. I'd say more, I'd say 20 cent 10 to 20 centimetres, which would almost make them like a third deeper. So I'd say, yeah, definitely to, to make these cupboards, the overhead bins. More um, usable. So yeah, deeper. Better use of cupboards. Yeah, deeper storage bins. That'd be a nice one. Yeah. Um, and I guess another one. roof light. One, yeah, roof light. And I know we're probably talking about things now where you go, yeah, but it's a budget van you bought, John. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of get that. But yeah, roof light, a skylight, high key, whatever you call them these days at the front. Um, there's strangely enough a cutout on the top of the van where you could cut one out and sit it perfectly. Yeah. It could be something that we maybe look at in the future as well, but that'd be something that definitely changed to add that. Yeah, it'd be a nice addition to get a bit more to light. To add light, light, in, light here in here and to um, get some ventilation as well. Yeah, and I'd have somewhere to stick the fairy lights around. And you could stick a fairy lights around yeah. it as well. Bonus. And another point, you can't fill up the water when the side doors open, or if I word that slightly differently, you can't open the side door when you're filling up with water. Um, basically, as soon as you open the side sliding door, um, it covers the water fill. Move that to the other side, folks, or move it back, you know, like 10 feet or something like that, um, just so that you can get inside the van when you're filling up with water. So after three months and four and a half thousand miles of use, I think it more than qualifies us to do a proper review of the van and um, and hopefully that's what we've done hopefully if you had any questions about this van that we've answered them if we haven't ask down below um, but as far as we're concerned um, panel van conversions the larger panel van conversions um, are certainly our preferred choice out of all the choices we've got out there for the two of us that probably at most would spend two weeks away at any one time yeah so if you liked the video please do give it a thumbs up if you think there's anybody else that might be interested in it do give it a share and obviously um, if you're not already and you like the content we come up with please do consider subscribing so until the next time catch you again see you later bye, bye.